What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm just gonna be going over all the mods that I've done to my Crosstrek. I did one a few weeks ago, but this one's kind of more in depth and I've added a few mods since that one. So I just wanted to give an updated list and go over each one specifically. So let's get started. All right, so we'll start at the front first. I have a SSD rally light bar that I installed for off-road lights that I got from Amazon. No. So they're all the same brand, just different colors. Then I have a set of ditch lights that I installed on the hood. Uh, I got the yellow amber colored ones. And up top I have a 42 inch light bar that I got from Amazon. It was only like a hundred bucks but it's super bright and I really love the look of it. And it's mounted to the roof using a two brackets and each bracket has two really powerful magnets on it and um, this just made it so I didn't have to drill in the roof. I was a little nervous with the magnets at first but this thing hasn't moved an inch in over a year so they've been working pretty good. And all these lights are wired to a custom fuse box that I installed under the hood. It just makes it so they have their own power source and makes it easier if I need to install anything new. The coolest part about the fuse box is I found a seller on Etsy who makes a cutout that perfectly fits the interior fuse box. So it's just this piece here and it has three fuses pre-drilled into it. And this allows me to power all the lights without having to buy a different switch or anything and mount it on the dash or any drilling. It just fits right in there. Speaking of the front, my newest addition is the Garage Alpha Off-Road Grill and it has the amber LED lights. It looks fantastic and you can check out a separate video for the installation process. Plus if you look in there I upgraded the horn to the Hello Horn Kit and I like the yellow and black because it matches my lights. So pretty cool little aesthetic. For the lift I went with a Rally Tech 2 inch spacer lift which I'm happy with. It's worked out pretty good. I haven't had any issues with it and it wasn't that expensive. As for reels, I'm still rocking the stock reels, but I plastic dipped them black and they're wrapped in Falcon Round Peak all-terrain tires. I believe the size is 225, 60, 17. I do love these tires, but next time around I might downsize the reels for a beefier tire option. Now for the roof. Uh, up here I have a roof rack that I also got from Amazon. I believe it's like 54 by 34. It's not the fanciest, but you know, it gets the job done and it holds anything I need. And it was very budget friendly. The roof rack, I haul my traction boards. And I also usually have a Plano storage box that I keep up here. And I used to keep it up here all the time, but it was killing my gas mileage. So I just kind of put it up there when I need it. Then I also have the holder for my jerry can. I only keep that up there when I'm using it too just because it was like a sale and it was just costing me so much more in gas to have it up there. On the driver's side I have my camping axe mounted plus a fire extinguisher. You know, I figured with all this wiring I have done in the car with the dual battery it's probably safe to have one. Hopefully I never have to use it though. On the passenger side I have my camping shovel mounted to the roof rack. And then I have this awning. Now I love this awning. It pops out in about a minute or two. And it's great for when you're just parked somewhere and need shade from the sun. You can just pop it out. You always have it with you and it takes up no space on the inside of the car. Back to the driver's side. I do plan on getting a similar awning. But it's going to be a shower tent. So it just melts here. Then it pops out within like a minute or two. And it gives me a full shower set up. I'll probably get that in a few months. And if you can see under here, I have the nameless axle back 3 inch exhaust. I love the way this thing sounds. I'll start the car and let y'all hear it. Also in the back I have a receiving hitch installed 
and mounted to it I have a wrench. The wrench is only like 3,500 pounds. I don't plan to get anything too crazy in this car so that's really all I need. This car is a super light anyway and I believe the max towing capacity is only like 3,000 pounds so there's no point to get too crazy with it. Now for my underbody protection I went with the primitive racing skid plate package. This includes one for the front then a mid one for the transmission, and then a rear one for the rear differential. And uh, this just kind of gives me that extra ounce of safety for anything I might need on the trails. All right, now for the interior. I don't have a lot going on, but I do have a portable Apple CarPlay device. You can also connect Android Auto to it. And this just allows me to have CarPlay in my cross track without having to change the stock radio because unfortunately it didn't come with it so it gives me all of the features that a carplay radio would have but it just mounts on top of my dash and then i have my dji osmo pocket 3 mount and then a gopro mount up front and then just my phone mount here and then i have my paddle shifters which i never really use mainly just for show then I have my GMRS radio, which is the basic one that wasn't very expensive, mainly just for when I'm on the trails and if I need to use it, not that big into it. And then the pedal commander I have. A lot of people say this is a gimmick. I think it works. I'm pretty happy with it. So it's really just do your research before you buy one if you're thinking about it. Now I usually have this in my back seat floorboard behind the driver's seat just because I never really have anybody sitting back there but it's a Blue Eddy AC-180 power station. And uh, this is charged by a trail road adapter that I connected just for this. So it only has power when the car's running. So it charges when the car's running and doesn't charge when the car's off. So I installed one just for this because I didn't really have one in the back seat. Also in the back seat, I have this USB hub that I installed and it's controlled by this switch here so I can cut power off to it and then I can cut it on when I need and the car doesn't have to physically be running for it to work. It has a few USB-C ports, a few USB ports and a 12 volt power adapter. I just pretty much installed this for anybody that sits in the back seat and needs to charge their phones and if I need to charge anything up I don't have to start the car I can just plug it up to this and charge it with no problem. In the trunk, I have an auxiliary battery that I installed. So I have a dual battery system set up that's ran by a DC to DC charger. And so the, this battery only charges when the car is running. And when the car is off, it's not connected to the starter battery at all because the DC to DC charger is not own. This just allows me to have constant power for a fridge or anything else that I might use. And that way I can charge it with this and not have to drain my starter battery. All right, so that's pretty much everything I've done to the cross track so far. I do have a couple of more mods I plan on doing in a few months. So stay tuned for videos on that. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And I do plan on leaving a link to a YouTube shopping list. I'll drop it in the description so that way you can go and see the prices for the mods or anything you might want. And as always, thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.